but as we enter into 2023 and we push a year behind us so many of us want to make sure that we are setting forth goals and plans and and new year's resolutions we want to make sure that we are going to win at life in 2023 and my goal for you and for myself of course would be that we would just win at life right not just for the year but for our for our life here on earth and then also our eternal life but when it comes to new year's it's always an opportunity to start something new to do something different than we did from the the past or from our previous year you know many times we look at it as, as being a new start it's a fresh opportunity we've just finished christmas we had those few few days in between christmas and new years and that's when we start looking back or reflecting back as to what we did last year and how last year might have turned out for us and then we start thinking about the new year what do we want 2023 to be for us so as we enter into that you know i know that many of us may want to make uh different habits may want to do different things for work make personal changes health lose weight whatever it is it's my hope that today and today's word that we address this and also give you some tips and some positive word or encouraging word from the bible from god's own mouth as the scriptures and see what it is he has to say that helps us to move forward and win life in 2023 but again as i was just saying you know to begin the first tip is we look back we take stock of where we are and where we stand and how we did last year or what it is about our life now that we may want to see different 365 days from now and again if you want to lose weight this year then most likely you've already taken time to look back and say well i know this is how i got off chart or off the, the tracks last year maybe i ate too many sweets maybe i just ate too much maybe i had too much fast food maybe i didn't work out enough all these different things we start trying, trying to evaluate and see how they contributed to where we are now and think how do i want to be different 365 days from now beginning with today right where did we go wrong so self-evaluation is key we have to look in the mirror at ourselves and truly see the person staring back at us and it may be an internal thing you want to change mindset uh mental mental struggles whatever or it may be an outward thing but still you got to be real with yourself again you know hindsight's 2020 right it's when we look back that we can kind of pick and see how things worked out for us and where we went wrong or what we could have done better so i want to encourage you to be honest with yourself but don't beat yourself up you know we do that enough in life too we get down on ourselves and say well i didn't make this goal last year so probably not going to make it this year don't beat yourself up let it go leave it in the past but Paul reminds us as we move forward and as we start the self-evaluation in Romans 12 3 he says for us not to think of ourselves more highly than we ought to think but to think with sober judgment and then in 2 Corinthians 13 5 he says for us to examine ourselves in other words look at yourself where you are and be honest about where you have been and where you want to go sober judgment don't beat yourself up don't think of yourself more highly but make those plans and goals to do differently than you did in the year past we're all flawed we all fail we all set these goals sometimes and many of us fail at them and some of them we may may make but we're all sinners we all have fallen from grace right we all have our our flaws and our, our issues and temptations that we've battled to that may have taken us off course last year but this year as we begin we want to straighten our path out right we want to reach that goal that we set out so if we want to change we have to be honest with where we are truly right now and then paul also goes on to remind us to put off the old self which belongs to our former way of life now again he's talking about our spiritual life here but it can also be applied to as we look back at last year when we set out these new goals and resolutions that we want to begin we desire to be different than we were in the past then we have to let those those things that we failed at last year go we have to leave those sins of the past behind and move forward 
We have to let go of those past hurts, those past wrongs, those past things that others may have done to us or things that we may have done wrong. Let go, forgive, and forget as best we can so that we can move forward into the new year unburdened by those things that we had last year. We don't want to bring them into this year if we can. But then to move forward, we have to, or to meet any goal, we have to have a plan, right? I think somebody has said before, you may have a, a dream of something that you want, but I've also heard it said that a dream is a goal without a plan. If you don't have a plan to get there, that goal is nothing more than a dream because it's out there. It's something that's, that's just out there. It's, not, it's a dream. It's not, a, not taking any real steps, any real plans to get there. It's kind of like you know, today we have GPS and we have our cell phones and we have everything in our cars, you know, a lot of us to, to tell us how to get to a destination. You know, we punch it in and we say, I want to go here. And then she tells us, you know, you're going the right way. You're going this way. You're, you're hitting the street, whatever. And if you make a wrong turn, it tells you, oh, rerouting, recalculating to get you back on, on, on track. But the old days, it was get out a paper map. And it was draw on the line, find your destination. You went down the, the map and tried to figure out where you're going to go. And, and even in that, you also had to plan, you know, maybe we, got, we, need, we know we're going to have to stop for gas. Where's the gas station going to be? Maybe we got to stop for food in two hours. Or maybe we're going to spend overnight, overnight in so-and-so town or whatever before we got to our destination. So the question is, how are you going to get to where you want to be in life? You know, my encouragement also is to make sure that your goal is right. You don't want to end up in a worse place than where you started. Again, if you look at the driving thing, you don't want to start heading to the mall and find yourself over in the next city because you set out on the wrong course or the wrong path. So to make sure that our goal is right, Proverbs 16, 9 tells us the heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. So you have to ask yourself, whose path do you want to be on this year? Do you want to be on your own or do you want to be on God's path, on the right path, the narrow path, as the scripture would say it? Of course, our hope as Christians and as people that are desiring to follow Christ is that we want to be where the Lord wants us to be. We want to seek his wisdom and his guidance as to where he wants us to be. But the truth is many of us start out with resolutions and goals and start making these plans to get there mostly on selfish concerns some of our goals and plans are for vanity's sake you know when we talk about losing weight a lot of times sometimes that's more about making sure that we feel good about ourselves, but then also maybe so we can get noticed by somebody else or maybe we want to get somewhere in in our job or in our business so that others may look up to us or so that we have some kind of sense of power or so that we have some kind of sense of security most of the things that we set out our goals for many times are for selfish reasons. So we want to make sure that, you know, we're, we're leading toward and we have plans set for or goals set that God would have for us or that would be honoring and glorifying to him or that would bring us into right relationship or on the right path with him. Your personal improvement and success should begin with our seeking God and what he desires for us. In fact, Proverbs 16.3 reminds us, says, commit your work to the Lord and your plans will be established. Now, it's interesting when you look up this verse in the original language, it says something a little bit more than just commit your work to the Lord. The original language actually says for us to give the burden of our life, our plans to God. It means to roll up our plans, our goals, our burdens onto God. In other words, we're giving him the burden of our plans, the burden of our goals, the burden of what we want to do this year or what we want to do in life. And then we're trusting him to establish our plans. You know, of course, without God's plans, most of the time, most, most of our goals will not succeed. We're told by Jesus, in fact, very similarly to this text here, to cast our burdens on him, right? To take his burden because it's light. To trust him with our life. To know that he's going to move us into the direction that he needs us or wants us to be when we're trying to seek his purpose and goal for our own life. 
And when we have, when we give our goals, our plans, our resolutions to God, then we desire that they line up with his will and his purpose for us. And we give him the burden of helping us obtain the right plans. Again, the second part of that verb says, and your plans will be established. He will help you set out in the right direction. He'll help you navigate the road you need to follow to fulfill your purpose and your will for him to have and meet the right goals in life. And again, all that we do should begin with seeking God's plan and purpose. And then we will find success. It may not be the success you think you desire. But that's part of trusting God. It's trusting that he's going to bring us and we'll have success in how he wants us to experience it here. Let's say you set out to be more healthy in 2023, right? It's an admirable goal. But what does healthy mean? It's just a lofty thing. I want to do better or I want to do more this year. I want to be in better health. I want to lose more weight or I want to save more money. What is more? Is more 1% or is more 20% or is it 100%? Our goals need to be specific. We need to sit down and say, I want to lose 20 pounds. Or sit down and say, I want to save $2,000 by the end of the year. That gives you more to strive for than just, I want to be more or I want to have better. Maybe you even say, I want to grow in my faith this year. But what does growing in your faith mean? What's the end goal? What are you planning for? What are you comparing your end goal to? You know, if we want to be more or grow our faith more, then we need to set aside specific plans for how we're going to do that. Most of the time it's going to be, okay, I'm going to read my scriptures every day. I'm going to pray, you know, multiple times a day and set out that goal, set out that plan to help you reach the goal of growing in your faith in a measurable way, in a measurable fashion. Because a goal without a specific end mark or, or specific goal it's nothing more than sort of a dream itself. Again, what is it? 1%, 20%, 100%? Yeah, most of the time, you're not going to reach it in that way. So where do you want to be in 365 days? Where do you want to be in this life? Make your goal specific so that your directions, your plan to get there can be made. Many times you even start backwards from your goal. Sometimes that goal can be so lofty that you need to break it down into other parts. Smaller bite-sized bits, you might say. For instance, this year, you know, this past year, I set aside the, the goal I wanted to read more. Well, read more is not not necessarily a, a goal. Again, it's not specific. So I said, I want to read 12 books this year. Well, you know, that's about 12 books, or that's a book per month, right? And that's great, but what if I have a 50-page book in January, and I finish it in 20, 20 minutes, basically, to, to read 50 pages, probably, for some of y'all, anyway. For me, it might take me a couple more hours. But does that mean that I read that book and then I stop for the rest of the month until February starts and then I pick up my next book and it's 600 pages? What I actually did was I set aside and I looked at the books and I said, okay, I count up all the pages and come down to 3,000 something pages for the year. Divided that by 365. That gave me a target every day of eight pages a day to reach my goal, to finish off those 12 books. So if you want to lose 10 pounds, how are you going to reach that by the end of the, the year? You need to break it up. That's almost that's a little more, a little less than a pound a, a month, right? And then figure out how many calories you need to do, and so on and so on. Same thing with saving. So on, you know, how many, how much you got to save every week to equal two thousand dollars by the end of the year if that's your goal. Have that specific goal so that you can get it done and knocked out. But anytime we set a goal, what do we got to do? We set out plans. We got to count the cost. Almost always it means giving up something or in some way we're making some kind of sacrifice. 
Most of us don't really like to talk about the idea of giving up something we enjoy or having or something that we may have little of. You know, if you go on a diet, what do you got to give up? A lot of the sweets, snacks, drinks, things of that nature. If you go to the gym, if you want to get more fit and you go to the gym and, and start a, a program there, you got to give up time. Most of the time you're paying for the, the, the membership, right? You got to count the cost of whatever it is your goal is and are you willing to pay that cost? It's just like Jesus actually speaking in, in Luke chapter 14. He's speaking about being disciples of him. And he tells the crowd that's there listening, he tells them, he says, you need to count the cost. He says, for which of you desiring to build a tower does not first sit down and count the cost, whether he has enough to complete it. Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock saying this man began to build what was not able to be what was not able to finish the man set out on a, a goal to build a building but all the finances and all the work that he had that he was able to give to it was just enough to get the foundation done it's like so many people as we talked the other night about going to the gym you know january you really see a lot of people start hitting the gyms but by february it's already starting to drop off if that long but yet most of the people's already invested time, money, everything into it. But they didn't have the willpower or the discipline to continue on. They didn't count the cost for sure. They realized that the cost was more than they were willing to pay. And that's why most of our resolutions fail because the cost becomes too high. It, becomes, it may hurt too much for us to continue progressing toward our goal. Again, as simple as my, my book reading plan might be to, to many of y'all, because it may not be a challenge for you, but it was for me, I had to count the cost. I knew it was going to take time to read. I knew it was going to take me giving up TV time or game time or getting up earlier in the morning, which has really been the best thing I did this past year, to have that quiet time, to be able to read. I had to give up sleep. <laughs> I didn't get, to, didn't get to lay in bed as long as I might want to some mornings. If it's getting more healthy, then you you got to determine what it's going to require of you. If it's growing closer to God, what is it that you're going to give up to help you focus on that relationship? If it's growing in faith, following Jesus closer or more, he says it may cost you your family and friends. That's the rest of the beginning of the discourse that he has in Luke chapter 14 where we just read from. Choosing him over our parents, over our children, over our brothers and sisters. Because he is to be the one that we pursue full heartedly. Is that a cost that you're willing to pay? The last thing, the last lesson I want to bring up to you or help you to win at life in 2023 and beyond is by looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 24 through 28. Paul writes, Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. So I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air. But I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others I myself should be disqualified. To meet our goals, Paul says that we need to exercise self-control. That we need to make sure that we're not running aimlessly. In other words, have a focus point, a goal, an end point to reach. A North Pole, you might want to say, to keep your focus, keep your compass in that direction. And then to make sure that we discipline ourselves. In other words, you can roll this all into we must live intentionally. Too many of us live in a way that just says, whatever happens, happens. Some of us don't even set goals. Whatever happens, happens. We're going to dream that we may re receive something, that we may get healthier. We may dream that we have money and savings, or that we make more money, or that we excel at something else, or that we grow in our faith. But if we don't do so intentionally, then you're not going to meet those goals. You're not going to make successful resolutions. You're not going to be any different or any better by the end of 2023. You're going to be making plans again for 2024, doing the same thing. But Paul tells us again, 
exercising self-control, running with purpose, and being disciplined is how we will obtain the prize. Whatever it is you're seeking, whatever it is you're trying to better at, you have to be intentional. Don't go aimlessly, as Paul says. But to truly win at life, we have to make sure that we had the right coach. We had to be on the winning team, right? Paul's exercise in running the race is all about him living for the purposes of God. God's race is the striving for the imperishable prize that Paul speaks of here. Paul sought to live for God's purposes. To do so, he had to die to his old self, which was helped when he met Christ on the road to Damascus. Paul, prior to this, was a persecutor of Christians, trusting in his own ability to live right by the law, by the Levitical law, the Old Testament law, to be right with God. Until Christ met him on the road to Damascus. From that point on, he was a changed man. From that point on, he truly lived the cost of discipleship, willingly taking whatever it cost him including persecution, arrest, beating, famine, homelessness, everything for the sake of Christ. And he writes about this in Philippians 2, Philippians 3, verse 8 through 10. It says, Indeed, I count everything as lost because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through Christ, through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and may share in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Again, Paul's number one goal was Christ, to live for him, to share the gospel with others, striving toward the goal of resurrection and one day living in glory with Christ. That's what mattered the most to Paul. And this is what should matter the most to us. To win the prize of life, we have to win eternity with Christ. For Paul, nothing else mattered. He lost it all in his life. So much, many would say, suffering so much, but he gained so much more. He knew the prize that he was striving after really mattered. So what are you willing to give up in your life to obtain the price of eternity? The prize is given through faith in Christ. Faith in his death and resurrection that he paid the price. He counted the cost. You was the cost. Your sin was the cost for Christ to pay to bring you into a right relationship with God the Father. That's why he died. That's why he had resurrection. And it's a free gift built upon our faith, but it does require us turning, repenting from our previous life, desiring to live right with Christ, trusting that he did all the work, but we want to live differently. We want to chase him. We want our 2023 and our life thereafter to be about serving Him and living for His purpose. When we do that, then we can truly say that we have won the prize, that we are going to win at life in 2023 and beyond. 